How can two identical redstone contraptions give different results? In this contraption, the bottom piston pushes more often than the top one, and you can also notice the pattern created by the math behind it. I'm gonna create a new world, go to the exact same coordinates and build exactly the same contraptions, and it looks like pistons built at the same coordinates behave the same. More precisely, the result doesn't depend off of the piston's coordinates, it depends of the redstone wire's coordinates. So what causes redstone wires to be locational? There are a lot more of these contraptions that can behave differently depending off of its coordinates. What they have in common is that the result depends off of which piston gets powered first. And they look like they should both be powered at the same time? It can't be at exactly the same time. Minecraft is a computer program. It can do a lot of things very fast, but there is always some set order. It's just insane that this order derives from these three numbers. Minecraft runs in 20 ticks per second, and each tick serves as a snapshot to what the player sees in the world. So on one tick you can see a long unpowered redstone wire, and on the next tick it can all be powered. But remember, multiple processes cannot run at the same time. So what really happens is, in between those two ticks there is a period which the player cannot perceive. During it, each redstone piece gets powered individually, starting from the one closest to the lever and ending the furthest. After that, all that remains is the result. Redstone engineers call this quantum mechanics, because of how tiny the time difference is between this piston powering up and the other one. So, does the piston closest to the lever get powered first, always? No. This piece of redstone wire does two things. Power the next redstone wire and power the piston. Which one happens first? Depends off of the location of the redstone wire. For example, here the next redstone wire gets powered first, and that means that also everything powered by the second redstone wire will be powered first before the piston. So it works depth first. Right, redstone wire, but what about repeaters and every other redstone component? Well, turns out only redstone wire is locational. So now if we open the source code, we know where to look for whatever is causing it. In the redstone wire class, because it's only an issue with redstone wires. More precisely, look for when a redstone wire extends a piston. Well, only when a redstone component receives a block update will it check if it should be powered or not. So we're not looking at what gets powered first, we're looking at what receives the block update first. When our redstone wire gets updated, which it will from the lever, it updates the power strength, and for now we're not using the experimental evaluator, so we'll go into the default evaluator. And here, as you could expect, we calculate the incoming power strength, and if it's different, we update the redstone dust's power strength. And then we also create a hash set, and add to it the redstone dust and every block around it, and then we iterate through that hash set. And that explains everything. I'm not the first one to find it. There's this post from 14 years ago from Seth Bling. Let me break it down for you. In programming, we have sets. A hash set is one of the sets. The main difference between a set and an array is that the set is unordered. But we are iterating through it. How can you iterate through something that's unordered? Well, in programming, the word unordered means ordered by its hash code. That hash code is a large number that there are formulas for. But even if you don't know this formula, notice that this hash set is of type block pause. The class block pause has x, y, and z, and here Minecraft even overrides the default implementation of the function that calculates the hash code. So in this context, this is the function for the hash code, and all redstone components order of operation depends off of this function. And guess what this function uses? The block's position, x, y, and z. Mystery solved. The redstone wire's behavior really does depend off of its coordinates. We can actually calculate that order of operations. Let's go here and do some math with the coordinates. We got that same contraption. Let's uh, write down its coordinates of the redstone wire, the block under the redstone wire, and the top piston. All of them are quite close to each other, and so are these results. With the hash code you can calculate their hash spread using this formula. It has a bitwise write shift, which is pretty much the same thing as just dividing by 2 16 times. XOR the hash code again, and that's the hash spread. 
if you do on it the bitwise end operation with the size of the hash set minus one, you get the bucket index, which is the order of operations. When iterating through a hash set, you start with whatever has the lowest bucket index and work towards the higher ones. The hash set size is always gonna be 16 because Minecraft is a three dimensional game. If it was six dimensional, the size would be 32. Also important notice, doing end 15 is pretty much the same as doing modulo 16. The bucket index is always gonna be between 0 and 15, and so here are the calculated bucket indexes. The one for the redstone wire is the smallest. But here's the confusing part, because this does not mean we are gonna update the redstone wire first. We are going to update the neighbors of the redstone wire first, because the redstone wire has the smallest bucket index. So the blocks that will update are this lever, air, this undesired block, and the top piston. So the top piston should power first. That checks out. Next on the bucket list is the bottom block, and the bottom block will update the bottom block on the right and the bottom piston. So the bottom piston will try to push, but it will notice that above it is already a piston that is trying to push. And you cannot push a pushed piston, so the bottom piston will do nothing. And so in that order, every neighbor and every neighbor's neighbor of the redstone wire will get updated. And this is also a unique property of the redstone wire. Every other block will just trigger an update on the blocks neighboring to it. But the redstone wire triggers an update to every neighbor of every neighbor of the redstone wire and also every neighbor of the redstone wire. Yeah. It's crazy that we still don't know what's gonna be the result of this contraption. Okay, let's write down the coordinates of the right block and the left block. Whichever one has a lower bucket index will have its own piston powered first. Let's calculate them and they're both the same! <laughs> Yeah, now, whichever block was added to the hash set first will update their neighbors first. So, the way they are added is first the piece of redstone, then we're iterating through the directions in this order. So, if we check, this way is north, this way is west, and uh, north is first, okay, so the piston on the north will extend first. Yep, that checks out. And why didn't the second piston extend at all? Well, it tried to, and it failed, and now it just needs a little block update. There you go. Also, if you have two pistons updated from the same neighbor, they go in this order right here, which is different for some reason, and now west is first. So now it's this piston. <laughs> and that explains all the edge cases, I think. Now, why did we see those patterns earlier? Well, from the formula, we could say that we are in modulo 16 arithmetic. So the first contraption has some coordinate x, and the eighth contraption has a coordinate x plus 16. In modulo 16, x equals x plus 16, so everything will repeat after 16 iterations. In fact, knowing that we are in modulo 16 arithmetic, we can simplify a lot more in this formula. 31 equals 15 equals minus 1. We can actually replace all the 31s with minus 1. Also, minus 1 squared equals 1. So all of this can really just become x minus y plus z, which actually makes calculating these results really easy. For example, the block under the redstone will always have a y level one smaller than the redstone wire, and x and z will be the same. So the bottom block will only be first if x minus y plus z plus 1 is smaller than x minus y plus z, which is only true for x minus y plus z equal 15. Almost always the bottom block will be updated last. So why did the bottom piston extend more often than the top one? It's a neighbor of the top piston and the bottom block, and we know that the bottom block is almost always last in order. The bottom piston extends more often because I built it towards negative z, so now the top piston is almost always first in order, which is a neighbor of the bottom piston. If I just built it towards positive z or positive x, the result would be almost always the top piston powering first. The numbers don't lie. Locational redstone is more often unhelpful rather than helpful, so to prevent it we can use a linked hash set or a tree set. I don't think that's within my capabilities. For real though, you can use a repeater, that guarantees the same result, or you can use the experimental redstone wire evaluator. No hash sets in there and all you have to do is while creating the world go into more experiments Redstone experiments turn it on. W Mojang for that. 
Uh, smash like. Though I would prefer if you smashed subscribe. Bye.